This question was asked in NEET PG 2023 and the question says that a patient presented with seizures, muscle tremors, backward arching of spines which is a very important clue after consuming some herbal medicine. What is the most likely cause? And your options are strychnine poisoning, oleander poisoning, aconite poisoning and castor seed poisoning. So let's look at each of these options one by one so that the answer will become very clear with you. So the first thing which we will discuss is strychnine poisoning. Okay. So here we know that strychnine is very very toxic. Okay. And if you see it is colorless but very bitter in taste. And Primarily, it is used as a pesticide for rodents and small vertebrates. Okay. Earlier, it was used because of its mechanism of action, which we will talk. Earlier, it was used in herbal medicines. Okay. Hence the history. Herbal medicine, because we will see it strengthens the contraction. Okay. It strengthens the contraction of the muscle. So in very low dose, it was used in herbal medicines, especially as a performance enhancing drug, but now no longer. So what is the common source? So the most common source is the seeds of Nux Vomica tree. So this is the common source. What is the mechanism of action? So it is basically a neurotoxin. Okay. And it acts on glycine and acetylcholine receptors. Okay. So these receptors primarily those receptors who are responsible for contraction of muscles, especially, you know, the back muscles, the facial muscles. Okay. So this is here. So what is going to happen is this primarily, as I told you, will affect the motor fibers of spinal Cord, okay and so uh, all the muscles which will be related to these the motor fibers will be affected okay so what kind of symptoms will you see so symptoms will appear very early so you know within when we talk about symptoms within 5 to 15 minutes and can last up to 24 hours okay and the symptoms will be because uh, uh, it will act on the motor fibers so all the you know symptoms related to the motor will be there so they will be generalized muscle spasms okay and uh, there can be cramping agitation if the dose is high you can even have seizures okay and death primarily in these cases will be due to the respiratory muscle paralysis okay if the dose is less because of the you know uh, contraction of the muscle there will be muscle uh, you know uh, you know there will be injury to the muscle leading to rhabdomyolysis okay in cases where death does not happen so another uh, you know form can be rhabdomyolysis then this will lead to myoglobinuria okay and this can lead to you know kidney failure or you know metabolic acidosis so all those things can be a part of the symptom now there are two very very characteristic term which you should know when we talk about uh, the symptoms one is rhesus sardonicus what is this so because of the spasm of the facial muscle the patient will have a grin because of the spasm of the facial muscle so this is a very very important clue in the exam and the second which the clue which was given here is opis tonus now what happens when the back muscles become you know contracted okay so the patient will have because of the contraction of the you know he will be in this position so because of the contraction of the ear okay so this position arc like position that is called as opistho tonus so arcing of back is was mentioned in this particular question so how do we manage it 
okay so obviously there is no specific management only you know symptomatic treatment you have to give and uh, first 16 to 12 hours so primarily symptomatic management will be there first 6 to 12 hours is very very crucial and if he has uh, you know generally if the patient survived this uh, duration then the prognosis improves otherwise uh, the prognosis is very poor for these patients uh, oral activated charcoal may be given if the ingestion you know in some cases it is not you know proven to be very beneficial but we still we give it so that it can reduce the absorption of uh, strychnine so this is all about strychnine based on that we know the correct answer will be strychnine poisoning now we will go ahead and look all the other options also because all of them have been asked in the examinations so the next we will talk about is oleander poisoning so i'll talk only the most important point so we know that oleandrine is a cardiac glycoside so all its effect will be similar to digoxin inhalation and what is the mechanism of action we know the mechanism of action is inhibition of sodium potassium atps okay so most what will be the common symptoms so the common again uh, you know earlier it was used in a lot of herbal medicines in low doses so what will be the symptoms of oleander poisoning so uh, you know even uh, when we touch the plant then contact dermatitis can happen contact dermatitis because of the ingestion you can have all the gi symptoms uh, you know especially you know nausea vomiting uh, salivation will happen then uh, diarrhea will happen so all those gi symptoms will be there okay uh, if uh, they can also be burning of eyes in these cases and ultimately death will be due to respiratory paralysis or more commonly due to cardiac arrhythmias okay because it's a cardiac glycoside okay so this can be the cause how do we manage it so again gastric lavage can be given okay activated charcoal uh, MSS can be tried activated charcoal can be given and then after that uh, primarily the management is symptomatic yes we do uh, you know anti digoxin fab 4 so these are specific antidote to digoxin so they are also found to be helpful in these cases so this is all about oleander poisoning the next toxin we are going to learn about is aconite so we will learn about aconite poisoning so we know that it is basically an alkaloid okay and what is the mechanism of action mechanism of action is it will you know uh, act on the alpha subunit of voltage dependent sodium channels so normally what happens after depolarization the sodium channel will quickly close but this aconite what it will do is it will bind with the sub alpha subunit and keep this channel open for a longer period of time so depolarization is affected okay so earlier you know it was used as antipyretic again in herbal medicines antipyretic or as an you know anti uh, pain so painkiller or as, as an analgesic it was used okay but uh, especially in Chinese medicine aconite still is being used in Chinese medicine so herbal medicine Chinese medicine it is being used and again here uh, the symptoms can be uh, first symptoms if you talk about will be primarily neurological so neurological symptoms if we talk about they will have primarily paresthesias and muscle weakness a little amount of cramping okay but not more than that then we can have cardiovascular symptoms where there can be hypotension palpitation okay bradycardia okay there can be gi symptoms so gi symptoms like nausea vomiting you know diarrhea abdominal pain so all these gi symptoms can be there then uh, there can be hyperventilation uh, sweating lacrimation all these things can be there so 
the 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 flow of uh, development of the symptoms will be first you will have some neurological symptoms then gi and cvs symptoms will start happening and the most common cause, cause of death again in these cases will be arrhythmias okay or respiratory failure but more commonly arrhythmias so how do we manage this uh, cases so uh, the management of choice will be obviously symptomatic things we will do but lignocaine okay so all the anti arrhythmics which act on sodium channel they all can be used for this case especially lignocaine is a very very important you know uh, action because it will directly antagonize the mechanism of action of this particular alkaloid the last is castor seed poisoning so we know what is the active ingredient here the active ingredient is resine which is basically a lecithin and what it you know uh, it comes from this uh, tree resinous communis also called as castor seed oil so what is the mechanism of action very frequently they will ask so it is a uh, inhibitor of type 2 ribosome in activating protein okay so uh, basically it inhibits protein synthesis and it's very very toxic in any form okay so it can be you know uh, toxic as if inhaled or if ingested okay or if uh, you know even in if injected so in all forms it is very very toxic now uh, we when we take out castor oil okay from the seeds now the castor oil now this is not oil soluble remember this is not oil soluble okay so in castor oil we do not have any amount of resin okay any amount of any but the cake which is left after the uh, you know removement uh, uh, you know taking out of the oil that will have around 5% resin uh, resin and you cannot give it to the animal feed till you deactivate it by autoclaving so that is very very important and what are the symptoms again the symptoms can be nausea vomiting diarrhea you know all those symptoms can be there uh, hematemesis melina and because it acts on uh, you know protein synthesis the symptoms may take hours or even days to appear this is very very classic all the other uh, uh, poisoning which we have studied in this particular session we have seen that they act very fast within 5 10 15 minutes but this may take hours or days to manifest and you can if it is inhaled then you can have cough allergy so based on the mode of uh, you know uh, poisoning you can have different symptoms again the management is mostly symptomatic so all these three poisonings which we have learned today three d4 all are very very important exam mcqs and uh, you should know them and all the points which I have told, you will be able to answer any question on these poisonings.